So I've got a quick question. To anybody using the budget system, how many envelopes do you have? How many categories do you have inside of your binders? Do you think you have enough? Are you missing anything? Just leave in the comments what you feel about your binder situation and envelope category situation. If you have not started your um, budget binders yet, how many categories do you think is enough? And how many are you planning to have for yourself? Let me know down in the comments. I just want to start this video off with that question. How many envelopes do you have? How many do you think is enough? Let's get it. Good morning, good morning, and welcome. I'm He Budgets. If it's your first time to my channel, I welcome you to the We Budgets fam, the We Budgets crew. I welcome you back. So this morning, I actually looked in on a live with Chris over at uh, Budgets Just Because, and um, in that live, we talked about one of the areas was the categories in the in our binders. And I honestly hadn't even counted my categories, so I wasn't really sure. But when the question came out, I said, uh, maybe about 30, but let me go count. Uh, so when I did go and count, um, I counted at that time about 61 which is double what I thought I had. Um, so what I wanted to do was just to come in and I um, put out my budget and I started to look it over and I thought, why not kind of do it on, on screen so we can um, see it together just as part of my journey. But being able to kind of look at what I have, see if I wanted to downsize it all, see if um, anything was missing. Um, I did note in that live that I attribute um, not going over on my budget to the fact or like in my spending to the fact that I have most of these areas covered. Um, so I, I like having all the uh, categories, honestly. Um, I've been doing pretty well with getting them all stuffed regularly and just managing them. So I just kind of wanted to go over my um, budget, kind of how I start, how I set down when I get ready to budget and kind of how I started my budget. So I did start my budget um, in November of 21. So a couple years in right now, year and a half. Um, but it's been a life changer for me, for sure, a game changer. Um, and it's, it's definitely um, progressed just over time. Um, the first thing I did when I started my budget is I kind of looked at the funds that I had available. That's where the budget should start at. The funds that you have available to um, fund your budgets uh, fortunately, when I started my budgeting, I did have some money put aside to where I was able to go ahead and go straight into the month to month budgeting, um, which I, works best for me. What I do as far as my number count goes, I do go ahead and I budget with my standard budget, my monthly budget. What I budget is about um, 4065 It was 4070 standard, uh, but health insurance for my son did go up just due to his age. So now um, I budget about 4,065. So that's the number that I've decided is a comfortable number for me that if I make more or less, that number for sure, um, I can um, budget. Um, but after that, or in addition to that, um, other charges that come out of my regular um, salary, just like my 401k, my 401k payment, my um, health insurance for my son and I, um, I do have some utilities that are on auto. And then I do have some auto savings accounts. So that money comes out automatically. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to count it. I don't have to budget for it. I budget for it um, in the sense of this number, 4065, is a number that I have to move around, the number that I have to basically play with for um, the month outside of some of the other essentials. And I do have some of my monthly essentials are here, like uh, rent and um, some of my other bills are set in here. But other ones that are on auto pay and then that are just pretty standard that won't change those come out of my pay automatically but when i sit down to do my budget i budget with four thousand sixty five dollars um the way that i break it down and my sheet breaks it down for me i'm um, kind of break it down into two payments um 
And this is really just for the sheet's sake, because when I get ready to do my budget, the money is there. So um, June is already all set. The money that I make in June then gets put to the side so that I can then budget July with it. Um, but as far as a breakdown for my primary binder, and I do have, um, I've got eight binders total with my one going to the bank binder, not really counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven binders that actually have envelopes in them that are fun that get funded uh, monthly. Um, so for my primary binder, I budget about um, one thousand ten dollars. For my bills binder, it's about nineteen sixty one. Into annuals, uh, and these go into my sinking fund. So annual, my annual family binder, uh, my vision binder, and my savings binder. Um, but for my annuals, I do about 133. Annual family gets about 141 per month. Uh, vision, 510. And savings get 310. So these numbers are numbers that off the top, I budget into um, monthly. There is the additional funds that come around, um, money from like my weekly um, leftovers that I rebudget in and add to sinking funds. Um, if I get any um, tips or bonuses, those are then reallocated. But as far as making my standard budget month after month, I'm budgeting um, right now my set number after looking at all my numbers and what works is 4065 for me for the month. So when I then break that down, I then um, started off with my primary binder, my monthly binder, and I believe my annuals binder. Those are the three that I started with. This area here on my sheet, this is my spending or my, my primary kind of my cash um, stuffing binder. So that involves my regular spending cash for the month, groceries for the month, gas, money for my son, household needs. It's some fun money in there. A little stash just for any overages that I put in there. Um, I also have in this binder uh, my green savings and my giving. So these are all the ones that are in there. Spending, groceries, gas, my son, household, fun money, stash, giving, and this one isn't tagged, but this is my green save. And um, just because I haven't gone over these in a while, my green save is just an opportunity to save more for this binder. So right now I am a month ahead, but my goal is to um, then just have some extra money. If there's any over, like ever any um, overages or something comes up, I have this money set aside working to get a, a second month ahead, basically. But that's what this envelope is for, my green savings. Um, I used to use this one if I was sending money to the bank. I don't actually could probably pull it out. I don't honestly use it. Haven't used it in a while. And my weekly leftover. So this is from after my close. Actually, I've got this videos coming up soon. Um, when I close the week, I do put my leftovers back here. I have decided that I'll start using some of those to fund my 100 envelope challenge. And then the rest, as always, will go towards my other sinking funds. Um, so for that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. I'm just writing these down because I did recount. I counted about 58 um, envelopes, but I did not count my vision. No, my doing me binder, which actually has um, at least five or six more envelopes in there. So after um, deciding the way that I put these numbers together was a, just a breakdown of pretty much what we spend regularly in spending money in groceries on gas, um, just a basic number, and then um, challenging myself to meet that number. Now to go over, there are times where we do have to go over on, you know, maybe we get something uh, more expensive at the grocery store, gas fluctuates, um, but for the most part, I'm able to stay within these numbers. So I did pull those numbers together and I set that as my budget um, in my monthly spending. And same deal. This is just the regular monthly um, bills. So my cricket account my Pandora music account, Netflix, and we are, there was finally a use for Netflix, so I'm still going to hang on for a little longer. Uh, my cell phone, car payment, credit cards. I do have rent in here um, to get my hair done monthly. 
And this one binder here is for um, a couple of our insurance policies. And back here, and this one isn't tagged either, but this is um, Black Safe. And this again is just saving towards um, another month ahead for, you know, so this used to go up front, another month ahead for this binder. So as far as the monthly bills go, when I put those together and just like we all should do, going ahead and seeing exactly what those monthly expenses are. Um, for me again, um, it's the monthly, um, like cricket. I don't know if they have an annual subscription, but I do have some annual subscriptions in my annual binder here. Um, but for the ones that are listed here are the ones that I pay actually monthly and not an annual charge. Um, but I put all my annuals together and, or excuse me, slow down all of my monthlies together. And that's what I have here. So first, and those are bills that have to get paid every month. I cannot, I, well, until I get rid of them. As long as I have cricket, I have to pay it every month. I have to pay my cell phone every month, um, paying into uh, another savings account every month. I might have two credit cards that have monthly fees on there. I will keep those until I purchase my home. Once I purchase my home, I can then um, purge those extra accounts that I have and um, not have to worry about them. They don't have a balance. I pay their monthly charge and it's really just to keep the credit age, um, the it helps towards my um, my credit score right now. So I do keep those. Um, hair is just one of those monthly expenses. I would like if I want to get my hair done, I, to have the money set aside for it. It helps me to plan ahead for, um, you know, if I need to get it done, the money is there. And if I don't get it done, it's money to put up to save for later. So primary spending, groceries, food, all those pieces. My black area is my monthly bills. Though they're two of the primary um, things that you want to consider when putting your budget together, your regular expenses as far as spending, groceries, gas, those pieces, and then your must-have monthly bills, rent, any credit card payments that you have, car note, car insurance, all those pieces should be in here. Uh, my car insurance, neither one of these are actually listed as my car insurance because I do pay it every six months, but it is in my annuals binder. Um, so I will get to that, but I do pay into that. Um, in addition to paying it every six months, I save monthly for it so that once the six months come, I have the six months to go ahead and pay it up. And then I do save in that, in that sense, I'm saving because Instead of paying um, and being charged a processing fee every month, I pay it six months ahead and get a discount. Um, into my annuals binder. So for my annuals binder, these are um, both charges that are actually due annually once a year or some like my, uh, what is it? Some like my car insurance that's every six months. So any that are over a span of time, I put into my annuals. So listed are inside. Oh, actually, let me go back up here and just get a count of how many are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I did add those up at the bottom. Twelve into that one. So for uh, car registration, or for my annuals, I have my car registration, which is due. Uh, in August, so annually in August for car registration. And these are my sinking funds. So I've gone over my primary spending, my monthly months ha must haves. And then from there, I transition in into um, my annual payments. So things that um, at this point I'm preparing for um, payments that have to come in the, in the, in the year. So not just, um, you know, things that these are things that have to be paid. So they have a set date. I have to have my car registration is going to come no matter what. Um, I have a couple more credit cards in here that have annual fees on there. I'm not monthly fees, but an annual fee until I get rid of those cards. They have that fee. It will come eventually um, in the year and it's best to have it as a sinking fund to where I'm paying into it and preparing for it in the year or able to pay it up and the money be there. So for car or for my annuals, I have car registration. I have um, one, another life insurance policy, uh, another life insurance policy through my credit union, um, annual payment. So this one is for 
this was one of the initial ones. So before I used to just save into all of my annual um, for all of my annual payments came out of this one envelope. Um, but I've over the time of budgeting and um, being just more detailed in my budgeting, I've uh, I save less into this one right now. I save one hundred and fifty dollars in here, and this is for anything I may you know may come up or I may forget or I might add in. Um, but I usually save one hundred and fifty into my annuals, and I make sure there's one hundred and fifty. So once I go down or pay something, I uh, um, add it back up to one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, this is my Amazon subscription. I pay that annually. Um, car insurance. So as I mentioned, I pay car insurance every six months. As of right now, I am paid for car insurance through through November. And this uh, payment that's in here is working into the first um, six months or November or December through um, the first five months or first six months, November, excuse me, December through the first five months of 2014. So this money is already here. Car insurance is a must. I'm going to have to pay it no matter what. Um, if anything, it can go down as I get older. Uh, my record stays clean. It could go down. But as of right now, my set number is set. I pay it every six months. The money's here. I do have a movie subscription for us. Um, and it just gives us, it saves us in the long run. I think the subscription is like $120. Uh, we get a free movie ticket every month. We get, um, it's like, a pretty decent discount on um, food and everything at the movies. Um, so it's something that we like to do that comes in handy. So we do have um, this movie subscription and I pay it annually. Um, I do have a Capital One Chase, two Chase cards um, that have monthly payments, or excuse me, annual payments. So that money is here. Um, they're all, all these sinking funds are already met. So, um, I don't have to worry about them. This payment is going to come. The money is here. I'll pay it. And then I'll go back to um, adding in however much I was saving into them. Um, part of my budget and part of that uh, 4065 down, um, I broke it down to first off looking at, um, say, this capital one. The annual payment is $40 per year. If we go up. Um, the goal is $40 per year. So this is what it costs. Um, the annual payment, I'm at $40, which is why I don't have to um, add anything I'm already set. Um, but the plan getting there was saving just $4 a month. So instead of getting to um, whatever month this is due and needing, um, actually looks like it's due in June back there. I haven't updated my little sheets. Yeah, it's due in June. So it's coming up this month. So instead of waiting until June of every year to just push this $40 out, I'm saving $4 a month, which gets me there quicker. Honestly, with this 40, I'm usually, if I get a bonus or something, I just pay it off. The money's there, but I don't have to worry about this bill come June um, that, hey, I need to now come up with an extra $40. I don't need to do that because the money is already here. Um, that's how I budget. That's what works. And the same. So looking at uh, my Chase Sapphire, um, it's $100 for the month or excuse me, $100 for the year, and it's due in September. And it's honestly, looking at it now, the bill is only $69. Um, but when I was, I wanted to put a prop bill in, Sapphire is 95. So I wanted to put a prop bill in here instead of just having that $95 sitting here all year. Um, it's not due until September. So I went ahead and um, I'll label these soon. Um, I went ahead and put $100 in here. Uh, built it up to 100 and then put a prop bill so it's an extra five in here um chase sapphire the goal was 100 i needed 100 i'm at 100 dollars now and to get there before i was putting eight dollars a month in there i knew that if i put at least eight dollars a month into this binder to start i would have the 95 dollars that i needed by the end of the year or by September. This is when I first sat down, beginning of the year, put my budget together. These are my numbers. This is how I need to make make it work. And I did that with all of these sinking funds. Um, and these again are the ones that have to be paid. These aren't just saving up for just in case or saving up just for fun. Um, but you know, these are bills that I, I have that have to be paid every year or every six months. Car registration, the same. I needed to save about um, is just under three hundred dollars. I think it's like two eighty six, possibly. Um, but I needed to save the two eighty six by August, um, so I had all year to get those numbers together. Um, to do that, I was saving about twenty six dollars um, per 
month, and that's how I planned it. If I save $26 per month, by the end of the year, by the end of the time my registration is due, I will have the 300. Again, it worked out because when extra money did come in, I could then put extra money into these areas, fulfill these sinking, these sinking funds. I'm at 300. I've got two months, or this isn't uh, due until August. So I'm not saving into those, but I am, you know, still saving into other areas. So um, I used the savings, saved up my number, and now the money is reallocated elsewhere. Blue save is kind of what I do for that. So all these areas, and this is pretty much, I believe, my budget getting ready for July. So in July, I don't have to stuff any of these. The only thing I need to stuff in this binder, I'm going to stuff um, annual f uh, payments, get it back up to 150. I'm going to put $46 into uh, my life insurance. Um, but besides that, I'm going to put an extra 55 into the back of the binder for um, just to re-up, basically. And the ex other money that I would have been allocating, because for the whole month, I need to do this binder. If I was stuffing this binder every month with the full totals, I would be stuffing about $253 in there. So what I did is I just decided, so out of this 253, I'm going to budget these two numbers and then give a little bit of extra, which is the 55 into the back of the binder. And then everything else that's left over then goes into my vision binder. Another opportunity to save. These funds are taken care of. So as far as the budget goes and where we are, we have um, made sure that our primary spending was taken care of, made sure that our monthly bills are taken care of, and made sure that our annual payments are taken care of. Car insurance, any annual payments on credit cards, any subscriptions that you have that are annual, we made sure that those are taken care of. Those are, for me, the three key pieces to uh, getting a budget started. For me, that's how I started my budget primary, monthly, and annual payments. These are things that I have to have. These are the essentials. So yes, within those essentials, within what I'm calling an essential, I've got my movie subscription. So that's not an essential. But for me, I've decided to have that subscription, which means I have to make sure I have the money every year. If I pay it monthly or I pay it annually, the money has to be there because I decided to have that as a charge for me. Um, my Google Play Pass, I'm actually um, I'm done with that one. The money is still here. I did have enough for another payment this year, but I don't need it. I don't use it. So um, once that comes up and I make sure that I'm all clear, no extra expenses for canceling it, I'll reallocate that money elsewhere. Um, Amazon subscription. I don't have to have an Amazon subscription, but because I do, um, it works in my favor to pay it every or to pay it annually opposed to every month there's a discount in that too um so with that breakdown again not saying that these are essential to have but these are the three areas that i of payments i have to make um and they're here primary groceries gas um groceries gas what else is in there <laughs> groceries gas spending money uh, my kid, household supplies, and some fun money. This is like just the money we cash we use in the, in the month. Monthly spending, our monthly bills. Make sure that those are covered. Look at what you have to pay every month. What is there? Um, that's what that binder is. And then annuals. Anything that has to be paid at a time frame. For me, it's anything that needs to be paid per year or paid every six months. That's what's set for annuals. At this point, I went ahead and expanded my um, budgeting. Once I realized, okay, I've got these areas taken care of, now let me look at the other things that come up that are important to me that I wanna be prepared for. That's where the sinking funds come into play. Um, I don't feel like any of them then were like next, um, but they probably started off in one binder and then expanded and became their own binder. Um, but we'll start with savings, or right, we'll see what's next one here actually which is savings, um, family savings is next. And that makes sense. Um, family savings are, um, for me right now, are is my son's birthday, my birthday. Of, uh, it's really set for like an annual vacation or a vacation. Um, this is in this binder is for, I'm um, saving for if there's any cause, if my family needs something outside of my immediate household and I can help take care of that. That's what this um, folder is for. 
Christmas comes every year. I've changed my outlook on Christmas. I don't spend so much on Christmas, but I do still like to have, um, you know, we eat well, family still comes over and there's still um, things to buy. We do still buy gifts for some of the smaller kids, really give out cash for the most part, but I like to have that money here. So Christmas is set. Um, gifts. So this actually is a new one. So um, before I had my son's birthday, my birthday, and then I would kind of pull out for, say, my mom's birthday or my sibling's birthday or just going somewhere and needing a gift for someone would usually come out of my spending, um, which I'll get to my spending later. Um, but it would come out of that money or my regular spending money. So uh, my monthly spending, that money would come out of there. Um, and then mint save. This budget used to be the color mint or kind of that color. Um, so this was just extra saving for this area as well. Breaking this down, um, these things are going to happen every year um, and I want to be prepared for them. So as I did develop my budget and, you know, was able to save more, able to put more to the side, able to um, spend less in other areas, I then developed these areas to save. So um, I need to grab another number. There's 12 envelopes also in the blue binder, which is the annuals. And I'm just um, tracking how many envelopes are each in each one so I can add them up because I have it. Um, so for my son and <laughs> hope everyone's good. If you're just jumping in, I'm just kind of going over my um, categories and looking at the opportunities are how I started my budget, how my budget has developed, where I save and how I save uh, monthly. So right now I'm looking into my family savings binder um, and in this binder. So like I said, these are things that are going to happen in the year that I can be prepared for. So my son's birthday is going to happen. It's in December, um, but the money and I allocated, I said that i put aside about $400 for his birthday. And for me, this is like his gifts. Um, if, you know, we decide to do something on a larger scale, of course, we'll pull money elsewhere. But when I put this together, it was more on the gift side and to have some money put aside. And $400 is more than enough for us to spend um, on a birthday. And I guess mine is even more. So I've put $600 into mine. Um, that covers again, and that pretty much covers everything. It honestly usually leaves me um, extra money. Uh, my birthday is in January. So right now I have my $600 put away all set for January 24. I don't have to worry about it come January. Um, the money is here. Um, this year, 2023 in January, I ended up just buying myself cologne. So it took a couple hundred dollars, bought me some nice cologne that I wanted. Money was there. Didn't have to, you know, second guess it. I wanted it. It was my birthday. Money was there. I got it. Um, vacation. Same deal. We want to try to do something. It's not a, ever really a huge um, kind of ordeal, but, you know, something. Sometimes we, you know, we're planning a big family trip and I actually have another full envelope for that. Um, but we have a big family trip planned for this year. And in addition to that, this is just some extra money if we decide to do um, some kind of other just, you know, more another getaway basically and there's eight hundred dollars in here so that's enough money to do a little staycation something close something nice um but the money is there same deal family something comes up the money is there for me um i am the big brother i'm the dad my dad was um dad of our family uh, when he passed i became dad big brother cousin um the one to go to so in preparation for that, I like to make sure that when something comes up, when I get a call, I have a little something put to the side. Um, it saves me from having to run up credit cards or um, in my case, in our budgeting case, pull from other envelopes. Um, the money's here. It's set aside. If something, you know, more excess is needed or something you know, is better to have this much and I save about I like to keep five hundred dollars available better to have this much available than nothing so that's kind of what i do with that um christmas christmas is going to come every year um, i've dialed it back i used to be just really into christmas spent a whole lot of money in christmas um i've learned and i've matured that um in just we don't need all the excess um my son is not a little kid anymore he doesn't need a whole bunch of toys um so you know that's just less money wasted these days i do though save about i save a thousand dollars so thousand dollars for Christmas money is there. It's covered gifts. And we went over gifts already. Just money's there. But 
that family binder developed later. So again, it's not one that you have to have, but for me, and as I continue to develop uh, my budgeting system, as I continue to develop my opportunities to save and um, just the money available to save and put away, I've put those areas together. Um, the good thing about it is these funds are for the most part in the bank, making some interest. I do track it all. I know how much goes to where, which fund has how much allotted to it. And when I pull out that amount from those funds, I pull out the prop bills and then update the sh tracker sheet. And then we get back into the group of saving. Same deal. When I put these together and when I look at my overall uh, budgeting, I made a plan to save these amounts. So for my son's birthday, in order to get to the forty four hundred dollars for to get to the four hundred dollars for the year, I needed to save about thirty four dollars per month. That will get me to the four hundred dollars by the end of the year, by um, December. The same for my birthday, I needed to save about fifty dollars per month, um, and so on and so forth. For Christmas, needing to save. Um, it says twenty dollars, but I'm guessing at that point I had already had some money put to the side. Um, and I know that's why I'm like I didn't add up right. But for Christmas it was eighty three dollars, eighty three dollars per month, and that would have got me to the one thousand. So even again, just breaking these down piece by piece and saying, okay, this is how much I need to get to this goal. These are sinking funds with dates. So Christmas is going to come every year on the same date, December twenty fifth. Yes, um, my son's birthday is going to come the exact same date in December. My birthday, the same date in um, January. Um, so I could kind of quantify how much I need for these areas and then break it down to how much I need to save to get to that number by the specific date. Um, that's how my sinking funds work. That's how um, sinking funds with dates work kind of breaking it down, saying this is the date I have, and this is how much I need to save by this date. So that's that one. We are now, we've got primary spending cash, we've got monthly, we've got annuals, and we've got family. I'm going to switch these just because I think they're going that way. So now from there, and there's seven envelopes in this binder. Um, from there, we've got the vision binder. And for my vision binder, um, this again is just another opportunity. Actually, I can come back to vision because that one came later um, for savings, which is the one I need to do next. Uh, for savings, um, this one was, again, just another opportunity to try to put some money away. Um, this is on top of our automatic savings. Um, but for other things that do come up in in life, um, needing to have some personal savings, uh, savings account for my son, um, clothes and shoes. We have to have clothes and shoes eventually. So again, better to have some money put away, some something put to the side so that when those things do come up, when that need does arise, the money's here. Uh, my car maintenance. So um, these are this binder is sinking funds without date. So things that um, come up that will pop up for um, sinking funds. I love the way that um, millennials and money says it. Um, just sinking funds come to play when you're sinking. Um, and that's what these are. Car maintenance. If you ever been in a position to where you, something happened to your car and it's just out the blue and it's an expense, even something as, as simple but regular as needing new tires. Um, usually most people aren't being mindful of needing new tires and it takes a flat or you know something to happen to then say, hey, you actually needed tires and not just one, but you need four new tires. Um, and then th that can be really expensive. If you don't have the money set to the side, if you're not ready for it, then it could get you. Quick call, pause. <laughs> 